Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So to me, uh, I'm going to determine all those by price, by support and resistance on the chart. I'm not going to determine those by a percentage or a fixed PIP number or anything like that. So probably the best thing I can do to give a short answer is I, I write a, a, a free blog at RoggyHorner.com. I don't know if I could type it anywhere so you guys can see. but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll type it in. It's uh, RoggyHorner.com. It's just a free free blog where I just talk about uh, setups and trades, and I actually mention my, my exits there, so probably it'll be easier for anyone who's interested in that whole point of validity methodology to just check out what I'm doing, and there's no registration or anything, you just go check it out. But again, I think the main key to entries, and the only thing that we can really control as traders is the risk. I think that's what trading really is, it's managing risk. And if we're going to do that, then I think the way we qualify risk is by understanding where the trade is no longer valid. Not where I don't want to lose any more money, not percentage, not a dollar, but where a triangle is no longer a valid triangle buy, or when a swing trade is no longer a valid swing trade buy or sell or whatever it may be. So to me, always ask yourself, when is this trade no longer valid? Because if you can't answer that, you probably shouldn't get into the trade. My two cents. Good point. Good point. Elaine, can you want to add anything to that? That is a great point. Um, I have to agree with uh, Regi, and as I mentioned earlier, to me it boils down to preparation in advance of things. If um, you actually um, listen to my broadcasts on a day-to-day -day basis from my website, I always try to look ahead of time to the, to the upcoming trading session and anticipate the events that are going to take place in the new trading session ahead in the new day, maybe even in the next several days. Um, and that really helps me, that preparation really helps me as far as controlling the risk and knowing what's to come because, you know, as human beings, I think we're programmed to kick into that fear mode when we start seeing things that we're not prepared for actually taking place. <laughs> and uh, I think that if you're prepared and you know what could be happening and you're expecting and you don't, also, at the same time, speaking about those two scenarios, um, scenario A and B that you also mentioned about, Steve, if you're emotionally attached to either one of these two scenarios, uh, that could also be problematic. So try not to get emotionally attached to either or and, and basically accept what the market gives to you. And that's oh, that a good way for me to, to decrease the risk and to... Uh, to not deny the fact that what I was expecting to happen is not happening. That makes sense. Makes sense. Um, question from Elaine that she's in Fiji and she wants to know what brokers. I really don't know. You know, if you haven't, um, one of the brokers that's in most of the countries is Interactive Brokers. I know I think they lead the pack as far as that. So Interactive Brokers, go to their website. That would be your best call. Um, your best choice, I should say. Um, please check out Interactive Brokers. Um, I think that they do have the most international exposure. Let me see if we can get one or two more questions. Um, one is about downloading data from the ISC. Yes, you can go to www.isc.com forward slash FX, and you can go to um, a place where we actually have uh, information about the products, and you can actually download the data. So that is... Uh, available and uh, we have one other question and the question is uh, let me see if I can find it the question oh boy oh it's a question about the daily range of FX options are they as volatile as spot FX both Ilian and uh, Reggie I don't know if you know you want to talk about how options work I think that's what Frankie's talking about um, but do you guys want to take a stab at that? Ilian, do you want to take a stab first, and then Raggy will talk about 
uh, how options, it's hard to generalize because options have a lot of different uh, characteristics? Well, as far as the basic strategies, like buying a call and a put, is that what? Uh, yes, yes, and I th you think he's trying to look for a general rule of thumb, which generally, it depends on how much leverage you use. I mean, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, in the spot market, you could create tremendous leverage, which could create a small pip move, could give you a huge dollar loss or gain. The options, you have to pay for the options, so normally you won't have as much leverage, um, but again, it depends on the option that you select hard to generalize, but again, that's why I'm, I'm trying to lean on either of you to talk about it. The question seems like it's a little bit difficult to answer because, again, I'm just saying, I'm going to repeat it. What average daily range of FX options are they as volatile as, as the spots? I guess I would basically say that you've got to remember options are about probabilities and they're about each option has its own delta. So um, the range of the option is going to depend on the option that you select. And uh, in the spot market, correct me if I'm wrong, Alien, um, the amount of leverage that you use is going to also create um, your uh, larger uh, leverage factor right? or a larger profit or loss each and every day. Uh, do you mind commenting on that? Yeah, absolutely. With, with the spot you're going to have, you know, depending on the type of account that you have, but normally, let's say you have a huge leverage, uh, normally it's 1 to 100, which is you basically can control $100,000 worth of currency with only $1,000 of your mining. And uh, like I mentioned also earlier, that could be great because you can double your investment uh, if you get 100 pips or one penny of a move. But on the other hand, you can lose just as much. So you have to be very careful. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.